And if you know about the music, then you know about life. This is movement music, moving to it. Put a fist up, prove it to us. This is much more than music to us. This is beauty of life. And if you know about the music, then you know about life. Word is uh, liberated perspectives. Uh, I'm on you for your host, Solomon Kamajan. My name is Nadia Turner. Each week, we're going to be discussing with college students issues that are important to them. Issues that they know are oftentimes marginalized and suppressed by the dominant corporate media in the United States. So this week, Nadi, we, we were talking about offline about uh, um, different things about the, the necessity and why it's important to, to organize, why it's important to, to, especially for young folks like yourself, college students, and maybe even younger, to get involved in the organizations and to even uh, start organizations if the kind of organization that you want is not in existence. And, and not just any old organization, not just joining any old organization, but organizations that are geared towards, um, that are taking, I would say, progressive steps towards, um, you know, alleviating, you know, different social issues and, and taking necessary steps towards, um, you know, creating, a, you know, a better social atmosphere uh, where, you know, where those students exist or even in, in, other, in other areas. I don't know if you want to, expound upon that what are your you know what are your thoughts you want to tell the folks what your thoughts are on that yes so I think that as students on this campus when we have certain issues and we have these organizations that we use as platforms to voice these issues and to come up with I think something that's important is that when we do voice these issues we come up with demands and very specific demands that one or two that can require a course of action that a lot of other groups and organizations can join into right. and we can have a united cause and something to work towards. Right, so you, you mentioned things that are going on right now, for instance, on different college campuses throughout the United States and where you know you see the, the students at University of Missouri were really effective in putting demands out there. They wanted to have, you know, the, you know one of their demands, they had several, but one of the demands is they wanted to have the, the president, who was very, uh, you know, at the very very most was was, was apathetic. I mean, he, he was, you know, downright, uh, um, you know, just didn't care about about what they were going through. Um, had made some you know, some extremely racially insensitive comments, to, you know, months back when students were were organizing and rallying, and uh, you know, really wasn't fit to be the president of a of a university that had. A collection of students from different walks, uh, you know, different backgrounds and, and walks of life, but they had they had demands. They had demands put forward, and, and so we were also talking about the fact that even with you know some of the things that are going on now nationwide with some of the organizations like Black Lives Matter, that it's more that it's important for for these organizations to as as catchy as the phrase is Black Ma Black Lives Matter, it should be also. Um, as as catchy to know what the demands are, what the, are the demands associated? What what are you know? What are you? What are we trying to to, to drive home? What are what are, what are the demands that we want to see uh, being met? Because otherwise, you know, what are you working towards, right? Yeah, and I think that's what made um, the situation at Missouri in Missouri so effective was that they had that. I mean, like you said, they had several demands, but one of the main demands was to get that president to resign. Mm -hmm. And they got so many different organizations to back them. They got athletes to back them. They had their, a, a certain, I forget the name of it, but basically a black student organization that was like pushing for it. And they got other organizations within the school to also push towards that common goal. And so that's why I think it was so effective. I believe they even had an alumni member who went on a hunger strike working towards this demand of having the president uh, step down and resign and he was like I won't eat until right. he resigns and so I think it's important with movements and organizations not only on campus but like you said national organizations like Black Lives Matter to have a central demand that people can work towards that everybody with all these protesting they're not just protesting this general uh, Displeas like they're not just protesting the fact that they're displeased with what's going on with police brutality and stuff, but they're actually saying this is what we want and this is what we're going to do until we get what we want. Right, exactly, and that's one thing Black Lives Matter has done is, 
it, it's helped elevate the, the discourse around police brutality in this country. It's helped elevate it. Um, but the next step is, is to make sure that, you know, that we're following up. We're, we're, we're collectively, not just one organization, but all of us, we're, we're collectively following up with demands mm -hmm. that now that the consciousness is raised around police brutality, we want to see a complete, not just an ending of, of police brutality, but we want to, we want to see the, the complete reevaluation, the deconstruction for re you know, and the reconstruction of, of, of the way policing is done in this country. We, you know, we want to see more, you know, a black community control of, 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 you know, police outfits within this country, because mm -hmm. if there is no black community control, if there's no control over, you know, police institutions and, and organizations and departments, uh, of the people that that live within those milieus, with, with within those those uh, environments, then then what are we talking about? So yeah, so it's it's following through those steps, and I wanted to so I wanted to ask you what's the importance of 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 being consistent, being consistent as an activist, as organized as an organizer, being consistent as an organization. What what's the importance of that? Well, first of all, it shows that you're sticking with what what you're fighting for like you're not just saying hey this is an issue we had and you're not just reacting to to different things that are going on but you're actually being progressive and you're you're making sure that you are consistently showing and laying down the groundwork for what needs to be done and working towards those goals and I think I just have this story that I wanted to share um, with with the Freddie Gray protests that were going on last year our campus organized beautifully. Like we had these different town halls and different organizations were hosting a bunch of discussions for us to talk about it. And there was actually this student meeting that was organized so that the students could come and make demands. Right. And we could come together and decide what we wanted to demand of our school and our president concerning what was uh, going on with Freddie Gray. And it was just wonderful when I went there. We were had so many plans to boycott Stamp, our student union, until we saw some change. And it just broke my heart when there was a, a student who was actually the president at the time of the SGA. And he was a white student. He came in and he was like, well, you boycotting Stamp won't be effective because of this. And that plan, that sounds good, but it won't work financially or economically and then you just felt the spirit of the room just drain and I feel as though and after that there was no more boycotting of stamp you still see the students there wasn't any follow through with what those demands we were going to make and the action that we had planned behind it so I think it's very important for organizations when you do have these issues that you're not just reacting and that when you make these demands you follow through with it and you stay consistent so that people can see you are really fighting for this and people can feel the need if they want to jump in and join like right. they see the history the credibility that your organization has right a unified front and that there's a there's already a culture creating that organization exactly so any outside voice that comes in there to try to to try to destabilize it or to as you said you know take the wind out of it you know, that's not going to happen in any shape, form, or fashion because exactly. we're unified. The culture is established, mm -hmm. and you know what? These are the, our demands. We're going to stick with them. We're going to stick with them. We're not going to allow somebody to come in there and 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 uh, and, and deviate us or deviate us away from or direct us away from where we're trying to go. Um, that's an excellent, 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 excellent point that you bring up. And the last thing I want to bring up as as time is is is, is dwindling out for this first episode, I want to ask you. Um, the role of the media, because you got involved in this in this um, media outfit, this largely student-driven media initiative, and we talked about the role of the media because the corporate media, the dominant media, the mainstream media, whatever how way people want to describe, you know, the you know the dominant media in the United States, oftentimes purposely obfuscates issues, marginalizes, suppresses issues. Mm -hmm. And so why it's so important for students like yourself to use social media to create your own media by, by uploading stuff to, to blogs, sites, you know, posting videos that you might do and interviews that you might do with other students and going out there and, and reporting on the street uh, a certain issue that's not being you know, recorded within your community and then uploading that for all your friends and your followers to see. I want, you know, why is it important to you? That's, that's 
kind of why it's important to me, but why is it important to you? I think because, uh, I think we all know that what's being reported on the news isn't always the full story. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's literally a glimpse into the story, and I think it's important to use the tools and resources that we have to show what the true story mm -hmm. is. And, you know, with camera phones, with YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all of these social media outlets can be used to promote our media and like what we're doing now with our, our sh this show, like to have that and create that and then promote that on a platform that kind of forces the world to really look at it. Because right. I think even with Ms. Missouri University, like they kept going and people were tweeting about it and, all, and that's how it blew up to a national scale because it was hard right. to just ignore it. Like it was out there. And I think that's important to, like we were talking about with consistency. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to consistently do that so that there's it's always there for people. It's not like people have to search and say, well, where do we find the truth? Or that they have to just rely on what they're being told on the news. You have your media that you've created with your people, your organization, right. that's promoting the message that you want to hear. And not, not even that you want to hear, that people need to hear. And so I think that's why it's very important to use social media for that reason and to be consistent with that. Right, without a doubt. I, I couldn't agree more. That's Nadia Turner. That's Nadia Turner. She's one of the many students that are involved in this media initiative, this media collective, UNITV Media Collective, <laughs> involved in this, uh, you know, one of the, you know, one of the, um, the, the different projects within this media collective known as Liberated Perspectives. You've just been watching Liberated Perspectives. So get used to hearing more from Nadia, hearing more of her perspective, her commentary, her reporting on critical issues that are being suppressed all the time, and and myriad other students that are going to be that are a part of this project, that are behind the camera, that soon are going to be in front of the camera and going to be reporting and giving their commentary. You know, we really thank you for watching this first episode of Liberated Perspectives. Expect a lot more. So. For Nadia Turner, I'm Solomon Kamajan. You've been watching Liberated Perspectives on the UNI TV Media Collective. Peace. And if you know about the music, you know about life. This is movement music, move into it. Put a fist up, prove it to us. This is much more than music to us. This is beauty of life. And if you know about the music, then you know about life. Word is.